roofing sales versus East Coast versus West Coast, the North versus the South, and then Florida. Sorry, man, you're on your own. Let's break down the differences here. I get this a lot. People are moving. Maybe a significant other took a job. Maybe you just wanted to jump states and you said, hey, what's the roofing market like there? Well, I'm gonna be breaking all that down in this video, in this Versus series, so you can see the real difference in this roofing market. And I've had an opportunity to work in many of these states, work with contractors in most of these states. In fact, I have clients who are using my sales system in every single one of them, also Canada, also Australia, and even Sweden. So let's break it down and help remove this mystery and answer the question, what's the difference in selling roofs across the United States? Hey, welcome or welcome back. Adam Benzman here, The Roof Strategist, and everything that I do is designed to help you and your team smash your income goal and give every customer an amazing experience. And if you like this video and you want more, jump into my free training center. There's no catch, there's a link in the description, and I will see you inside. All right, let's hit it. I wanna work our way from the outside in. Let's talk West Coast first, Washington, Oregon, and California. Right here, we have a very heavy retail market. Yeah, there are a few folks, a few contractors picking up on some wind claims in the hail that'll fall in the eastern part of the Washington state, Oregon state, things like that. But it is not super common and is not a big market. The price per square in these markets is quite high. That is to reflect two things. Number one, crazy high costs of living. And number two, in order to earn roofing jobs in these markets, there is a tremendous amount of ad spend gone into that. And therefore, the acquisition costs go up and everybody pays for it. So high retail, very traditional retail, your traditional appointment that's highly qualified, both decision makers there, they're in the house for quite a bit of time and the winner walks out with the deal. Wildly competitive market. And now as prices have gone up, there's a lot more price conscious stuff going on and people competing on price to win the business than even before, which has always been there. That's your West Coast market. We wanna compare that to the Northeast. So basically New Jersey, I'd say Washington up. This market on the Eastern seaboard, Northeastern seaboard is also traditionally very much retail focused. However, there's a lot more companies there that are either well-versed in storm work or a hybrid of retail and storm. There's not as many companies that are purely storm driven. They do exist, by the way. I just got back from Boston the other day. I've spoken in Philadelphia. I've, I've been in Washington. I've been in Virginia. I've, I've spoken in Connecticut. And the more I'm focused on this seaboard side, the more retail focus I see. And there are even some retail companies that are just trying to figure this storm stuff out. And a few companies that are working the storm environments. Price per square basis are quite competitively high as well. Again, same thing, high cost of living and people spending quite a bit of money for a more traditional sales process. Now, as we work our way through the West, so we're heading West from this Eastern seaboard into Western New York, Pennsylvania, into Ohio and the Virginias, Kentucky, we're gonna start to see that storm market really pick up. And what I see is it carries all the way through Colorado and New Mexico. We can follow that full north and south. It's a very big chunk of the United States that I see is very heavily influenced, the roofing market in general, and companies are focused on storm work. Now, does it mean that retail companies don't exist? Of course not. They do. However, the amount of storm-driven companies, from my anecdotal observation, just from being in my position and working with thousands of them, is that there's quite a bit. And the companies that are retail-focused companies are quite equipped to handle storm damage claims and that influx when it falls in their lap. Whereas the full West Coast, and, and again, up in the Northeast, I don't see it quite as much. Now, the difference within this hail zone, wind zone, tornado alley, we see prices per square go up as you go north and go down as you go south with the exception of Florida. Florida, you are your own animal. The Florida market, which I'll address in a minute, is very uh, unique. In Minneapolis, we have some of the highest prices per square. And again, almost every company there is driven by the storm environment. They're gonna work that, they'll limp through on retail. They'll get retail leads through the reputation that they've had, but the lion's share of their work and their best years are driven through storms. Again, that's gonna carry over even into Montana. Montana is a storm market, not quite as, as wild, but the, the more Western rural states like Montana, Idaho, Wyoming are in this quadrant a bit different than the harder sell West Coast. Now there are some companies that are taking their sales process a bit more seriously, but we are seeing more storm activity happening here and there. 
there, there's not as much competition. The companies I know that are in those markets and I've got clients in all of them are doing very, very well. And recent storms in 2020 put Idaho on the map with creating quite a nice market there more recently. Now we get into Utah, Nevada, Arizona, Albuquerque, the Southwest and states even like Arizona, which recently just got blasted with hail. Traditionally are retail markets, but then when storms hit, they're a really big deal and people capitalize on them and come from all over the place. Prices are a bit lower in the Southwest because people can roof year round. Now you get into states like Texas and Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, this Southern corridor, even in Oklahoma, so many storms happen. It's highly unregulated. There are licensing that's not even required. There's permits that aren't required. And this is where you see a lot of riffraff. Now I am by no means a fan of big government. And at the same time, it's a tough position to be in because I see in Texas, the rampant amount of homeowners who deal with shoddy contractors and poor workmanship because some states don't even require contractors to carry insurance, which again, this just puts a tremendous burden on an unassuming homeowner, which can be troublesome. Again, race to the bottom prices that occur here. Retail markets are really tough. They do exist, by the way, in certain metro cities like San Antonio, for example. But again, mostly a storm-driven markets. When I say mostly, for those that are about to correct me in the comments, I'm saying mostly, not entirely. I have very good friends and, and clients that are in San Antonio and the lion's share of their business is retail and they work storms when they come in. You'll see sprinklings throughout, but I'm just talking about in mass. Now, when we get into Florida, Florida has some of the highest prices per square in the U.S. that would compete quite well with Minneapolis. In fact, I'd say those two are probably the highest, Minneapolis and Florida, Minneapolis being a city, Florida being a state. And Florida has a unique landscape where there's these companies that are like, we only do retail. In fact, I was just in Jacksonville about a week after the hurricane and there were companies like, yeah, we just do retail. We don't care about the hurricane. If it landed where we are, we'll help folks, but we have our business and we're retail companies. Now, on the flip side, there's quite a few companies in Florida that are storm-driven. Hail in the central part of the state, northern part of the state, wind and, of course, hurricane claims. The interesting thing is those folks are just like, we only do storm work and the other guys, we only do retail. And then there's this emerging group of folks that are really trying to become well-versed in both, which is required because here in Denver Metro, which is where is home for me, we had three years of virtually no storm activity. And in a market that was reliant upon it, nothing happened. And then people had to learn how to sell retail. We're seeing the changing economies here. In summary, what I find really interesting is, as I've observed working with contractors in all these states, is the desire for most contractors to want to be well-versed in both. And I think that makes a ton of sense. It's why I built my sales system to teach you both storm and retail to remove that mystery because storm folks that want to get into retail are really intimidated. Retail guys that want to get into storm work don't understand the process. Storm to retail, retail to storm. Both sides are so intimidated. Do I need to change my system? Can I teach my retail guys how to sell storm? Can I teach my storm guys how to sell retail? And the idea is when your sales system is identical, Identical. The process is the same. The formula is the same. All we change is the language we use. This is how we develop a well-versed company. And that's, again, why I developed my sales system the way I did and why so many people love using it is because if they're in Philadelphia and they're working retail and then a storm comes, they can just flip a switch and now, boom, we know exactly how we're going to be selling that storm work. My key takeaway here is no matter where you are, with the exception of this far west coast that's seeing some wind claims and maybe a little hail, it's very important to be well-versed in selling whatever it is you sell, but the other side as well. Don't put all your eggs in the storm basket. Don't put them in the retail basket. You need to be well equipped for both because even if you're a retail company and a storm hits, you want to be able to be in a position to take advantage of those opportunities where the need is established, a bunch of homes are damaged, someone else is paying for it, and you can gobble them up leveraging that great reputation. Likewise, if you're a Denver-based company and you only do storm work and it dries up, you're going to be in a tough position. So what's the best market? The best market is the one you're in, differentiating yourself to win. That is the best market because everyone in America is going to need a roof, has a roof, or is going to have a roof get damaged. And instead of trying to find that best opportunity, it's my opinion that the best opportunity is right where you are. So that's all I got for this video. If you want more of these videos, jump into my free training center right now. I'll see you inside or hang with me here on YouTube. I'll see you in this one. See you later.